we find ourselves getting angry, we find ourselves becoming sad or becoming afraid, and we start thinking about all the worst case scenarios and and listening to the cautionary tales, it, it can put us in a state of reactivity, which is fine, right? We all it all happens to all of us. It's fine. You get reactive from time to time. But here's the thing. If we make a habit of getting reactive, then it becomes that much easier to become reactive the next time. So what we want to start to do is we want to start to um, get in the habit, want to cultivate the habit of responsiveness, responsiveness, and then intentionally practicing our ability to adapt to change to whatever extent we can do that. So the smallest little wins, you know, you don't have milk for your cereal, <laughs> right? Somebody drank it, they didn't replace it or whatever. You know, these small little things. Um, you ran out of dog food and someone's, it was someone else's responsibility to replace that and they didn't do it. Or uh, somebody cuts you off that you're talking to and they're not really listening to you. And it's these small little moments that give us opportunities to, to step back, take a moment, step back and say, you know what? How can I respond to this as opposed to reacting distressfully to this situation? And maybe the best response is no response. Maybe it's just listening. Maybe it's just instead of seeing this person as someone who's doing something bad to me, maybe seeing this person as, hey, this person is just like me, but they've been a bit tired. And I know what it's like to be tired. Or, you know, they're a little overwhelmed and I know what it feels like to be overwhelmed. And so they're not perfect today, just like I'm not perfect on occasion. And they're behaving in this way and and it is what it is. And so I'm just going to hold space because that's that's what I would want someone to do for me. If I was overwhelmed, if I was tired, if I was irritable, if I wasn't able to, to really listen would I want someone reacting back towards me or would I want someone just sort of holding that space and, and maybe teasing out that responsiveness that I would like to see in the other person? We all kind of get the general idea of reciprocity. Generosity begets generosity. Love begets love, right? When you're loving, you get back um, that thing that you are, that you're being. When you're being generous, you get back generosity from the other person. Right, we've all been around people who are really generous, and it it makes us want to be more generous as well. If someone is being really generous with us, it makes us want to be generous with the next person. At the same time, if someone is being very stingy with us, and we've all been in that situation where you go out maybe to dinner at a restaurant and <laughs> and you leave a generous tip, and then your your stingy friend leaves, you know a stingy tip, and then it happens again and again. And after the third or fourth time, what happens? You stop inviting that person out to dinner with you because that energy of that scarcity is just not that attractive. And if that person asks you for a favor, you may be reluctant to do a favor for them because of that scarcity energy. So what they're creating in the dynamic between you and them is scarcity all around. Scarcity begets scarcity. So when we want to take advantage of this law of reciprocity, a lot of times we'll wait for the other person to go first. So that scarcity person may be waiting for you to be generous first, and then they're going to be generous. Or if you want love or patience from someone, you'll wait for them to go first. And then you're like, okay, then I'll, I'll be patient. If you're patient, I'll be, I'll be patient. But that's not the way it works. The way it works is you have to go first. You have to do so in a way that's unconditional, which means without any condition, without the condition of them going first. And that's how you enact that law of reciprocity. That's how you start to create the kinds of experiences that you ultimately want to create. So again, this can make every day absolutely fascinating because not only are you practicing responsiveness as opposed to reactivity, but you're also giving yourself a chance to practice the law of reciprocity. And that's how you can literally uh, mold 
and shape your life and your moments in your life in in ways that support what it is that you would like to continue creating from year to year, decade to decade. And uh, and every day is, is is an opportunity to do that, you know, dozens of times, dozens of times, even with yourself, even with yourself, even even just showing yourself more responsiveness as opposed to reactivity. When you start to get that negative self-talk going in the back of your mind, that's an opportunity to sort of disengage from, oh, well, this is, you know, taking it personal. Oh, this is me beating myself up and no, this is just a relic from the old days when maybe that was what was happening. And it's still sort of playing out because that's what we've been conditioning ourselves to do. And now I have an opportunity to just see it just for what it is. It's just negative self-talk. It's a function of what happened in my past. And instead of reacting to it and, and doubling down on it and reinforcing it, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to just be completely neutral about it. If you like that video, you're gonna love the next one. Click this thumbnail right here and I'll see you over there.